Cooking for me is what puts smiling in my heart. Today, we're going to make salsicce brasate con carciofi. Fry sausages with artichoke hearts. Pasta con carciofi e prosciutto cotto. Pasta with artichoke hearts and cooked ham. And one of my favorites of all time, braised artichoke hearts with peppers. And of course, we got to finish with a great dessert. Fragole ubriache, also known as tipsy strawberries. And here are my thoughts about the heart of the artichokes. Come for the recipes. Stay for the story. Artichokes. Have you ever looked at an artichoke? I mean, really, if you think about it, you walk through the fields, you look at an artichoke, the first thing that comes to your mind is, oh, what a wonderful weapon. You can go hunting with artichoke. You rip it out of the ground, next thing you know, you come back with a deer. I have no idea how it happened. The first guy who looked at an artichoke that said, hmm, I think I can eat that. Salsicce brasate con i carciofi. Braised sausages with artichokes. I know that artichoke is one of those things that most people don't know what to do with it. Well, let me show you, because as far as I'm concerned, artichoke is one of the most mysterious ingredients with one of the greatest flavors ever. But you have to cook them just right. Mixed together with sausages, they bring out the very best of them. Deglaze with a little bit of wine, a little bit of lemon juice. I will show you the new walala. So, let me show you step by step on how to make one of my favorite recipes. Salsicce, brasate, con i carciofi. First thing we're going to do, is we're going to brown our sausages. Do you notice that the sausages that I'm using are fairly small? They didn't come out exactly like this from the store. When you get your sausages from your market, from your butcher, you can do two things. You can cut them in half, or you can twist them and give them the shape of this little salsi trophy. They're very easy to make and they're a lot of fun. Why do we brown the sausages? It's to bring out a little bit of extra flavor. And together with the extra flavors, also to seal in the juices that are going to be extremely important for our cooking later on. So the first thing that I like to do is to brown them on both sides. And as we're doing this, at the same time, the oil from the fat inside the sausage is being released into our olive oil. Some of the juices of the sausages are coming in, and they're giving us the base with this wonderful selection of flavors that we're going to put together in just a moment. The sausages are brown, but remember, they're not cooked all the way through. So we're gonna take them out and let them rest. And in a second, we're gonna add the other ingredients. Also, when you start cooking it, add the heat down so that it cooks gently. The other ingredients, we're gonna start out first and foremost with the garlic. The garlic is cut nice and big. What's important about the garlic cut like this? It's extremely important because if you were to chop it, the garlic would burn. Ooh. This aroma already, I love it. And then we have the uh, onions. The onions, as you notice, I cut them in a style called grossolano. You heard me say that before. Grossolano means something that you do uh, without great sophistication. And it's helping, actually, it seems as if it was an insult, but it's not. Because I found that cut in this fashion, within the context of this dish, the onions taste slightly different and actually picked up a, a wider flavor. If you wanted to do this much more elegant, something that you would like to present for a fine uh, event, cut the onions finely, as you've seen me do in many of my elegant sauces. But I'm telling you, you'll be cheating yourself of an extra notch of flavor. The next thing that we're gonna do together with the onions, we're going to add our artichoke hearts. I, myself, cleaned them up and made them just perfect as they are. We wanna get a nice little toast in there. If you don't know how to clean up artichokes, you can use canned artichoke hearts. But if you do that, wash them in clean water just so that you take some of the outer brine out. At this point, you have to make a choice. Where do you want this dish to go? The choice that I make is I want it to go everywhere and to fly, fly with pride. What does that mean? First, a little bit of spice, a little bit of red pepper flakes that I want to get them going right here at this point and then lemon zest. This lemon zest, I just stripped it from the outer part of the lemon. Why do I treat it this way? I find that the oils, which are still trapped on the outer uh, part of the lemon, are much easier to render in this fashion versus chopping this lemon zest very, very fine. The aroma already is telling my story, and it's a beautiful story. Guarda che bellezza. Also, at this point, one of the things that I like to do is to add the parsley. And as all fresh spices, I like to add the parsley early in the process because as it fries into the base with all the other ingredients, it really opens up and develops its flavor. 
Once the onions have started to soften, the next thing that you want to do is to put back the sausages into the mix. And the next addition is, in my opinion, the one that really makes the dish. A nice bit of white wine. And stir real well and reduce. Why are we stirring? What happens during this cooking process, even though we've done this on, on medium heat up to this point, the juices coming out of the artichokes, coming out of the sausages, reduce so intensely, they look like a little dark speck at the bottom of the pan. Many times people think that maybe they burn something. Those are highly reduced flavor diamonds. By adding the wine in there and gently stirring about, you release them back into the base, into a liquid form, enhancing, therefore, the flavor base of the dish that you're making. Mamma mia, che bellezza. Look at this. This is where I totally fall in love with what I see. The last thing that I'm going to do is to add a little bit of chicken stock. We have this already coming up to a boil. I'm gonna just stir around a couple of more times, then we reduce the heat and we let this simmer all the way through. We gotten the perfect consistency in terms of the liquid amount. So at this point, I turn off the heat from underneath altogether. And I rely once again to one of my favorite tricks. I'm adding a little bit of butter to it. As I add the batter, I turn this around. The last thing that I do, take a sip. Perfect. We don't need to add any salt. There's plenty of salt already have come out from the flavoring of the sausages. Believe it or not, we're done. And now, we're ready to plate. Let me show you. Maybe it's me having fallen in love with the sauces when I was young that I always try to find a saucy way to make just about everything. Maybe it's the fact that I love this dish because it made me fall in love with artichokes, understanding the beauty and the value of this particular veggie. But I absolutely love artichokes and sausages together. I have to tell you one thing, and you need to be careful about this because it's a warning from me the sauce that it comes right with it. It's the kind of sauce that's gonna almost force you to eat a whole loaf of bread. I know you're laughing with me right now, saying, come on, Stellino, is it possible? <laughs> yes, it is. But there it is. There is the sausages and the artichokes perfectly combining a dish that looks elegant and beautiful, but truly is the remnant of the memories of my youth. And there you are. Braised sausages with lemony artichoke hearts. Perfection. because it takes a lot to clean the artichoke, to get the choke out. My mom was not gifted in the making of artichokes, I'll say that. Uh, she always left the choke in. I think the later I learned should have been taken out. But what the artichoke does have, it's a mysterious voice. It's like a, a symphony of its own. To me, an artichoke, it's like a beautiful woman. You really don't know her until you get to spend time with her. Pasta with carciofi e prosciutto cotto. I know, it's a mouthful. Basically means pasta with artichokes and cooked ham. Very simple to assemble and full of flavor. Let me show you how to make it. The olive oil is getting hot. To the olive oil, we always start with a little bit of red pepper flakes. And the reason why I do it, you know, is because I'm crazy and I like spice. Not that spicy, but enough spice. While the olive oil is getting hot, I also like to add here the garlic. Many times you've seen me add the garlic, not at the very beginning, but rather to add it while the oil was very hot. In this particular case, instead, I want the oil to come to temperature with the garlic. Would it be a problem if you were to add the garlic when the oil is hot? Not really. This way, I feel that I have more control, and that's why I like doing it. Now, as you can see, the garlic is starting to jump around, and this, for me, is the moment that tells me it's time now for me to add the artichoke heart. Now, I've already cleaned and cut this artichoke heart in cubes, cubes that are about, I would say, a half an inch thick. They have darkened the moment that I've taken out of the water, and when you do this at home, especially when you use artichoke hearts like this, make sure that if you're gonna store them for more than just a couple of moments, to put them in a bowl of water with plenty of lemon juice in it. I would say to two cups of water, you wanna put at least three tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Why? The water covers the artichokes, but what the lemon juice does, it acts as a retardant from them going 
into deep black. If you were to leave these out, not even packed into water, one of the problems that you would have is that instead of looking like this, they will look like black pieces of charcoal. Does that ruin the flavor? No, it's just less appealing to look at it. That's the reason why I do that. As the artichoke heart uh, are starting to pick up their own color, at this moment, I like to add the other ingredient, and that is the onion. The onion, to me, give it a little bit of sweetness, and the sweetness that they give to the basic saute is something that defines the character of the sauce. How do you describe the flavor of the artichoke? Uh, the flavor of the artichoke is mysterious. I think the artichoke uh, is one of those things that you really need to know. It's, it's like me meeting my wife. I thought she was always beautiful, but I didn't know how many layers there were to her. And an artichoke is uh, one of these vegetables that's full of layers. This is one of the aspects of cooking the artichoke that I love the most, combining it with other ingredients and allowing for the artichoke to really showcase its value. Now, the next addition is even the much more important. Here we go with the cubed cooked ham. Baked ham, boiled ham, you can use whatever you want. Wanna cook it long enough so that the ham picks up a little bit of color, and then we'll proceed with the other ingredients. We are at the daily moment where the next ingredient needs to arrive. And there is a sequence of two. The oil is nice and hot, everything is nice and hot in the pan. I want the parsley to fry right into it. Parsley, more often than not, is added as a decoration. Let me tell you, parsley has a lot of flavor. Depending on how you use it, the flavor blossoms and blooms in a different way. Next, what we're going to do is add a little bit of white wine. And cook this until the wine reduces by half. Now, this is nice and thick, exactly to the point that I want to have, and it is at this point that we do add our chicken stock. You wanna add enough to cover the ingredients that you have in the pot, and you wanna bring this to a boil, and once it reaches a boil, you want to reduce it to a medium heat, and you wanna make sure that it reduces to the point where the ingredients are once again slightly exposed. In the process, what will happen is that the artichoke hearts will cook to the tenderness that we're looking for. We add the sauce exactly where we want it to. Now let's add the pasta. The pasta, when I cook into the sauce, you can see the ham, the artichoke hearts, all of it coming together. It is at this point that I like to do a couple of extra additions. Parsley. I could put it fresh right on top when I present the pasta, but I like to have the flavor of parsley covering every aspect of what we have, but in a gentle way. Right now, the parsley is simply releasing its flavor into the sauce, to the pasta, combining with the other ingredients and giving us the finish that we're looking forward to. How important is this finish? A couple more additions, and let me show you what those are. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some softened butter. What I love about the butter is that it thickens up the sauce, it gives it a nice creaminess, and when I turn off the heat like this, as the butter cools out, it tightens the sauce. It does by leaving a glaze over the pasta. Now watch this. Look how beautiful the pasta is. Now the glaze is within. You can see all the elements of it. One last addition that I like to do at this point, and that is the addition of cheese. I've turned off the heat, very important for us to do that, because if we were continuing with the heat underneath, stirring the pasta about, the cheese that would have tossed and gone to the bottom of the pan could actually have burned there, and this is one way to do it. Oh, mamma mia, che bellezza sta pasta! I'm sorry, what I said is, what a beauty this pasta is. We finish, we're done, we're ready. Now, let me show you how to plate. Splitting the pasta is one of my personal satisfactions. I like to accumulate the layers, one on top of the other, trying to incorporate as many of these beautiful ingredients. Because I would like, with every bite that you have, to be able to witness in terms of flavors, in terms of taste, the beauty that all of these combinations are. The ham, the taste of the artichoke hearts, which I personally believe to be almost like the liquid gold of cooking. This is, in my mind, 
the sweetest of all songs. And there it is. That's how we make pasta con carciofi e prosciutto cotto. The artichoke, you got to peel all these leaves out one at a time until you get to the heart. And when you get to the heart, you got to work it out really to get all this little hair that chokes out. And finally, when you braise it to perfection, the artichoke sings to you. Braised artichokes and peppers. The mystery of artichokes reveal in the company of peppers, a fantastic side dish that stands alone as an entree. Let me show you how to make it. We have the oil, extra virgin olive oil, nice and hot. To this, we add a little bit of red pepper flakes. Why? Because I'm Sicilian, that's why. You don't need to do this when you make it at home for yourself, but I like a little bit of spicy to it. I add it right here, right now, as the oil is starting to become hot. Two things and two reasons for this. One, I want for this to emerge its spiciness into the oil. Two, later on when we stir about, I would like for some of these little red pepper flakes to also coat some of the other ingredients, giving us this wonderful balance between salty and spicy. As the oil is getting to be nice and hot, I like to add some garlic. And the garlic that I add is cut nice and thick. The next thing that I like to do is to add a little bit of chopped onion. White onions or red onions does not make much of a difference. And mmm, mamma mia, che aroma. I don't know if you can smell the aroma at home, but when I do this, I already feel like I'm home. One of the greatest things about cooking for me is that I think the reason why I fell in love with it is because it reminds me of my home when I was a child. A little bit of parsley to it. I do this often. Why do I add the fresh herbs earlier on into this process? Is so that they fry into this mixture. And as they do fry into the mixture, they release the oil into it, making the base even the much more interesting. The next thing that we do, we add the artichokes. Now, I cleaned these artichokes earlier today, and I've actually placed them inside some water with a little bit of lemon. This is to prevent them from going completely black. Does that change the taste? I must tell you, my opinion and in my experience, that has never happened. As the artichoke hearts are starting to pick up a little bit of brown, the next thing that I like to do is to add the peppers. In the case of the peppers, I did a couple of different things. I have taken the peppers and I have yellow peppers and red peppers and I've cut them almost like spaghetti style, fairly thin. Why? I want two personalities into this dish. I want the personality of the artichoke hearts, but I also want the personality of the peppers. Heck, let's put them all in. The personality of the peppers that does two things. The peppers, in case you have not figured this one out already, are full of water. So you see them right now stiff, hard, but over a period of time in which they will brace together, the water will be released, will go into the base of the sauce. Plus on top of it, because of the fact that we cut them in Lent, one of the things that you will notice is they will soften up, they will lose most of the stiffness, the body will hug every spoonful that you will put on the plate, giving you this wonderful, exceptional finish, which visually speaking, adds a lot to it. So for a few moments, let, let all these flavors marinate together and connect. The aroma is splendid. You can see everything coming about together in a wonderful way. This is a great side dish that you can serve with chicken, with fish, with meat. But I must tell you that it is so good that you can also basically use it as an entree on its own with a nice piece of toasted bread or if you're lucky enough, grilled bread from the barbecue. We are ready for our next addition. You can use regular white wine. I'm using a little bit of sparkling wine. Why? Maybe I'm channeling my dad. He had this passion for sparkling white wine. Now notice the wine has reduced to a glaze. It's picking up some of the color stuck at the bottom of the pan. And now we go with the second amount of liquid that we use, which is chicken stock. If you don't want to use chicken stock, you want to keep this completely vegetarian, vegetarian stock would be just as great. I said vegetarian, maybe I should say vegetable stock. But I find the chicken has this ability of marrying well with all of the ingredients in which is inserted. Now, I'm gonna increase the heat, and I'm gonna bring this up to a boil. Once it reaches a boil, we're going to reduce this and bring it down to a simmer. And we're gonna let this simmer for about 20 minutes. In 
the last 10 minutes of the braising, what you want to do is to do it completely uncovered. And what you will notice is that there is quite a bit of evaporation. So the liquid that you left with is this thick, wonderful sauce that's made of all these flavors that we had. But I have one more trick up my sleeve. First, I'm gonna go with some fresh parsley because now I want the fresh parsley to actually cook right here. But the thing that makes it quite interesting is butter, sweet butter. Why? The reason why I add it is because, as you can see, the butter melts into it, and it gives us this wonderful finish, which I consider to be almost magical. In my opinion, this is a little masterpiece. I know I'm gonna have to plate it, but right now, if I could, I would like to look at it a little bit longer. Mamma mia, che bellezza. It's fantastic. Let me show you how to plate this. Artichokes. To the uneducated, they might appear as if they were a weapon. But look at this, as they fall into the dish, surrounded by the peppers who have collapsed, releasing their water into the sauce. Look how beautiful, lascivious, sensual they are. These are not vegetables anymore. These, these are notes of a symphony that I hear in my head that I can taste in my mouth. I look at this and I ask myself, how did this happen? How was I given such a gift? If this was what I was given, as long as I can share it with others, it makes it relevant. I look at this and I say, there's one more thing that I need. What could it be? A couple of pieces of grilled bread. You can serve this as a side dish, but you can see that just as an entree, it's perfect by itself. And this is how you make braised artichoke hearts with peppers. How does it sing? The moment that you're tongue touches for the first time a piece of the artichoke braised in wine with a little bit of lemon and then your papilla moves from papilla to papilla, the flavor that you taste, this moment that you feel that artichoke is no longer a vegetable. The artichoke is a fable. The artichoke is a movie. The artichoke is poetry. Fragole ubriache, tipsy strawberries. That's what it means. What is this? It's a dessert. Why is it so much fun to make this dessert? It involves cassis, and it tastes great. Let me show you how to make it. Strawberries, what I've done, I have cut the strawberries in small pieces. No matter when you get the strawberries, depending on what time of the year, they always need a little bit of help. They're sweet, but they could use a little bit of help. So the help that I first uh, place into this flow is the addition of a liqueur called Creme de Cassis. For those of you who like a drink called Kir Royale, we're very familiar with the Creme de Cassis. Creme de Cassis, uh, mamma mia, listen to me, I'm almost eating my own words. I'm so looking forward to dive into this. Creme de Cassis is made with black currants. Now, by itself, this is great. You could actually let it marinate in this and walk away and it still will taste great. But we need to have the great equalizer. What is it that I refer to as the great equalizer? The creme de cassis, in my opinion, has a wonderful flavor all by themselves. I use it for making sauces, I make a lot of drinks with it, but it has a tart finish. Now, the tart finish and the sweetness of the strawberry would be a nice combination of two opposites meeting, but I say, why make it difficult? Go ahead and put just a touch of sugar, enough sugar to make your life happy. And if you're anything like me, you know that sugar is like the special way to go. Also, sugar does for us something wonderful. It's a chemical reaction that takes place. When the creme de cassis marinates with the sugar over a certain period of time, it brings out the original flavor of the strawberries. It also makes the strawberries relinquish into the mixture of their own natural juices. Together with the sugar it is almost a formulation with the acidity that leaks out of the strawberries and having this meeting together with the creme de cassis, it creates a natural syrup, meaning you could eat it as it is right now. It's sweet enough because I put, I put plenty of sugar for that. But I would advise you not to do that. As several desserts that I've shown you in the past, the best thing for you to do at this point is to place this in the refrigerator and to let it rest for at least an hour. I have some that I placed in the refrigerator. Let me get it. I want to show you how to plate this. Now, plating this is extremely simple. It's a two-part. First, putting the fruit. I'm using a slotted spoon. The slotted spoon allows me to pick up a great amount of the strawberries. Then, the sauce. And it's spectacular. And this is what I love the most. One more scoop of strawberry on top of it. Look at them shimmering, full of light. The way they capture the light is absolutely beautiful. One last addition, which is mandated from my wife, because she always likes to have a little bit of green, no matter what I do. 
and mint is a favorite green. And this is how you make one of my favorite summer desserts, fragole ubriache, also known as tipsy strawberries. I cannot believe I'm saying this about artichokes. Hey, that's how I feel. Artichokes are beautiful. Hey, I don't care what they look like. Oops, ready? <laughs> I'll be happy to. You want one of those? Yeah, uh, Same position, or you like this? So after I cut him, this is what you want to do him this way or this way? Okay, done. Let me do one more. Let me do one more. Oh, 